you know, as you know, there has been a long debate in the news business about should we show the photographs? Would that help? Would that would that wake people up in a way that the coverage of these things uh, apparently doesn't? Uh, the Washington Post has finally made that decision and done that. Uh, what what is it that you see in the AR-15 in particular, which is what the Washington Post is concentrating on, uh, and how it has evolved uh, from a fairly obscure option in the gun store when they started being sold uh, to now this this dominant uh, profit center for arms manufacturers. Yeah, thank, thanks for having me on, Lawrence. I think, you know, what the Washington Post has done is what decent, responsible people across the country have to do, and that is, you know, there are certain things that it would be easier to look away from and ignore and pretend weren't reality, but that's not what, you know, that's not respon what responsible citizens in a democracy do. I, I mean, I left my career in the firearms industry, and in many ways, it was a dream job for me. I grew up as a kid hunting and shooting, and I still, I went hunting today. Um, and I and I enjoy owning guns. At the same time, you, you can't look away from the reality of the proliferation of hatred and fear combined with very, very lethal firearms, firearms that for the most part, part 18, 19, 20 years ago, really were not sold in measurable numbers, not in any way compared to today. And I think this country has lost sense that if we're going to exercise those kinds of freedoms, we must also look ourselves in the eye and understand what that means and understand what it requires of us. And I, and I don't think we're doing a great job as a country wrestling with that right now. You made a piece in uh, a point in your Atlantic piece uh, that was interesting. I, I didn't realize this, that when they were first coming on the market, the AR-15, the gun business looked at them as a kind of embarrassing and dirty uh, product that, that some people didn't want to be associated with before it ended up taking over the business. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't very long ago that the industry itself would not allow tactical gear and for the most part um, really dissuaded the display of things like AR-15s and high capacity magazines. I mean, I say not very long ago, you know, 20 years ago, 18, 19 years ago. Um, now it's it's essentially taken over the industry. And I and I think, you know, you've we've been talking about politics on on your show here today and on the previous shows, the same sort of breakdown in norms and responsibility has taken over our politics. And I and I think much of the radicalization has been lit, led by a right wing, you know, sort of cabal um, that that thinks that thinks bloody civil war is some glorious thing and that thinks, you know, arming yourself with guns and, and um, you know, solving the world's problems or in this case, creating them it is in some way glorious. And, and we see how disastrous that can be when 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 it runs out of when it when it runs away from us like it has. What is it like for you now as a candidate for governor in Montana trying to bring this argument against the AR-15 uh, in a state where gun ownership is so common? Look, about 67, 68 percent of uh, the people in Montana own guns. And frankly, I'm one of those. I own lots of guns and I enjoy owning them. Um, and, and I think the vast majority of Montanans and the vast majority of Americans really are troubled by the disastrous, horrible things, the things that we see pictured in those Washington Post publications. Um, so it, I don't think what I'm fighting for um, in my campaign is in any way different than what um, 80, 90, 95 percent of Montanans uh, want to fight for. We don't think that um, you know, looking away from the horrible impacts uh, of things like this is responsible. We don't want it on our conscience. Republican women, Republican men, they drop their kids off at school just like everybody else does. They don't like to view this stuff. They don't like to worry about it. And so, you know, responsible people need to stand up and, and fight for, uh, you know, fight for safety and fight for decency in our society.